Hello there and welcome to the year 2016. Folks, this is Ion Port. It's the most authoritative trade and business program we have in this country. It brings the port activities closer to the public and also the public closer to the port. Whatever problem or challenges you encounter as far as dealing with the port is concerned, it's always addressed here on this platform, the Ion Port. Our proud sponsors, Star Assurance, they offer you the best marine insurance if you are in this particular trade and any other business as well star assurance offer you the best insurance the royal bank also provides you the best marine finances if you've got any containers coming around you have no money to clear them and all of that deal with the royal bank and you should be able to uh, sort your business out also ghana community network services provides e-solutions to government to allow government raking a lot of revenue they have been assisting this country a great deal providing a lot of solutions to governmental challenges when it comes to doing business and finally ut logistics ut logistics folks if you're in the logistics business and you haven't come to ut logistics then you haven't arrived please visit them and they've got a lot for you as far as logistics is concerned the year 2016 promises to be very great for business. They hope to rake in a lot of revenue, improve on whatever they had in the year 2015. So we went out there, uh, spoke with the cream de la cream of business in this country. Those who make the difference, the policies as far as trade in this country is concerned. We spoke with the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Also the Commissioner of Customs spoke to Ion Port and then the Director General of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, all speaking to us. The year 2015 was a fairly good year in terms of revenue productivity. It's a year in which we achieved our revenue targets. And to us, it gives us a lot of pleasure that having worked tirelessly through the year, we ended with the revenue targets set for the authority haven't been met. We know for certain that we were able to achieve the programmed collection for the year 2015. It's also the year in which the reform in terms of revenue administration and management was also uh, carried out and a lot more was achieved in that area. A number of new laws, that is the revenue laws that have been re-engineered and simplified were passed. So it's a, a watershed year as it were, but we sailed through the year. We also suffered a few setbacks like when the floods came and warehouses got flooded. It was a setback for us, but thank God we were able to overcome these challenges and at the end of the year we had our breast to the tip that we have really uh, uh, come home and dry in terms of revenue collection. We anticipate that in the year 2016, we're going to see even a little lot more progress in terms of revenue productivity, collection, compliance on the part of taxpayers, and we will push ahead with the agenda, the, the principle of revenue harvesting, so that just as a farmer would cultivate the crops in order to harvest more, we will cultivate taxpayers, educate them, ensure that they are fully aware of what rules and laws that they need to comply with in terms of their tax responsibilities. Even in the area of income tax, we have rolled out a new uh, automated system that will administer domestic taxes, income tax, and excise duty, and so on, and VAT on a new uniform platform. That, again, will also yield some uh, returns in terms of uh, high revenue uh, from our taxpayers. And we also believe that in all the, the initiatives that we have had in the year, in the past year, by the introduction of the uh, taxpayer identification number and its 
wider application than before, you will have compliance going up, and so will revenue in the year uh, 2016. 2015 has been a very difficult year. Of course, back home, we've had problems with the issue of power supply, and therefore it appears that uh, industry was not producing much. Then, uh, I mean, whilst we are going on with our planning and expansion programs, our neighboring ports are already doing some work, and it tended to kind of take, especially the transit trade. Now, we think that 2016 is going to be much better. A lot of, a lot of the issues, the challenges might might, might might be out. Some of the activities that we experienced in 2015, where there was some kind of molestation uh, of Ghanaian drivers across the border, I mean, we believe will no longer be taking place and therefore enhanced trade. For GPHA, we'll continue to move with our development agenda. Um, Parliament has given approval for the continuation of Takrali Port expansion works. Uh, so the dredger has since already resumed dredging. Uh, the terra port expansion, we, we, we intend to, to, to start digging, start actual construction this year, you know, between the first and second half of this year. Um, we working, looking at the feasibility of starting the uh, motorway expansion also, uh, under this uh, project also, uh, this year. Um, and um, of course, our new hospital, uh, we're working you know, hard to see how we can finish it. It's not basically uh, the issue of installation of equipment and then the managerial issues. Um, so that should take us uh, a couple of weeks uh, to be able to finish. So uh, 2016 looks very promising, but of course challenging uh, because of the effects of the national election. To all our clients, especially those who do business with us, uh, we say uh, first and foremost, we are most grateful we thank them uh, individually and collectively. Uh, and uh, in particular to, to Ghana, uh, the Ghana Revenue Authority, the entire staff, uh, I mean, and for that matter, those who work at the seaports, both Tema and Takradi, they've been uh, very cooperative, uh, and we very much appreciate that. Um, the other statutory bodies that work around the port, um, including, the, of course, uh, the police, uh, national security in different forms, um, the uh, uh, clearing and forwarding agents, um, the uh, shippers, uh, shipping agents, and the shipping lines, uh, the various importers and exporters, food and drugs auto uh, authority, all these statutory bodies, we, we're most grateful uh, for their cooperation. Uh, we it's a prayer that as we enter 2016, uh, we'll enhance that uh, co cooperation. Uh, we'll try and see how we can consolidate these activities, especially with the coming into being of the uh, single window system. So 2016, we look forward on our part as GPHA uh, uh, to uh, a very I mean, uh, uh, prosperous year with us. And to our workers, and uh, in particular also, we're most grateful uh, for the support uh, throughout 2015. And uh, we wish um, on behalf of the board and management um, uh, best, the, the, the best that they can wish for themselves for 2016. And uh, we strongly believe that collectively we should be able to put uh, Ghana and especially our maritime industry at the forefront for the, within the West African sub-region. The targets that were set for our division, we have been able to exceed it. And we are looking forward to the new year with hopes that we may be able to achieve the new target that has been set for us if some of the things we want to put in place work and work well. For example, the common external tariff may be coming on board. And when it comes on board, uh, some of the commodities that were attracting a higher rate of duty will move down. So there's going to be a balance. So the ECOWAS region has come together the rate for tomato and cooking oil should move from 20% to 35% to protect our local industries. And I believe with that, it will help us to stem some of the problems we're having with the importation of these items. Looking forward in 2016, I want to wish our stakeholders and our officers a prosperous and happy new year. 
Our officers will have to work extra hard this year to enable us to meet the target because the one percent over last year's target and it is a tall order and we have to work extra hard in order to meet that target. It means therefore that we have to be extra vigilant in our work. Those of us who are involved in examination of goods must look critically to ensure that goods that are misdescribed are brought to book and the necessary penalties imposed. Also, goods that are underdeclared, especially the quantities and the values, we have to take a second look at them. Those who decide to use other means must be brought into the book to make sure that they comply with the laws. Those who comply, we should facilitate trade for them so that they can move without problems. But those who decide not to comply, they will have a lot of challenges with us because we need the revenue for the development of this country. And to our other stakeholders, that is the importers and exporters, we are going to facilitate trade for those of them who are compliant and do legitimate business. They will have no problems with us. Those who intend to, be, to bring in goods misdescribed or underdeclared, they will have a tough time with us. We are waging a war on them. So it is in their own interest, submit genuine documents so that facilitation of trade will be made easier for them. I wish them a prosperous and a happy new year. Well, so it appears a lot is coming up in the year 2016. Listening to those uh, big men as far as trading in this country is concerned, the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, uh, Commissioner of Customs and the Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. We all pray uh, that all their dreams and vision and mission will come to pass in the year 2016. Also, we spoke to our own sponsors. Now, they are heading... Uh, big institutions that also steer the affairs of trading in this country. The Royal Bank, Ghana Community Network Services, also UT Logistics, and the Star Assurance, they're the ones making difference. So we found out from them, what do they have in stock for their clients in this year 2016? The General Manager of Ghana Community Network Services, GCNet, says they are poised to introduce new innovations in the first and second quarters of 2016 in order to make the clearance system better and more efficient for customers. In 2016, we have a number of uh, new innovations uh, coming out that will be deployed uh, in the first quarter, second quarter of the year, and all in the interest of uh, making the clearance process and uh, efficiency better and uh, so we continue serving our clients in the best possible way. Well, I mean, GCNet is in constant collaboration and also in constant touch with all our stakeholders. We have regular stakeholder meetings uh, several times a year in all parts of the country, by the way. And uh, the same applies to our consultation with government, our consultation with uh, the port, with customs, uh, with GRA domestic tax and so on, and uh, these meetings uh, really help us to identify the needs of our clients, of our stakeholders, and uh, guide us towards uh, the type of innovations and the type of uh, new demands and uh, new solutions that we can uh, put on the ground. He said GCNet will continue to engage its stakeholders regularly in order to identify their needs and address them appropriately. He assured clients that GCNet has also invested in new equipment to serve Ghanaians better. And in 2016, we continue with our aim for delivering excellent service. We monitor the same service constantly. Uh, we invest heavily in new equipment, in new products and uh, we can assure our stakeholders, our users, our clients that uh, we continuously attempt to have 100% uptime. Obviously, sometimes uh, in all technology, breakdowns happen. We keep them uh, at a minimum and also try to have the issues resolved as quickly as possible. 
UT Logistics says it is better positioned to derive more benefits from the oil and gas sector, power transmission lines and construction of roads, among other projects in 2016. 2015, we, uh, we did a lot of work for, for, for our clients. We expanded into all the regions in West Africa. We expect more volume from clients. We also expect our clients to do even better than what they did last year in the sense that this year has a lot of opportunities. There are more projects coming up. There are more projects in, in oil and gas. There are more projects in power transmission lines. There are more projects in roads. And we are in a better position to um, clear. We are in a better position to support our clients to ensure that all these shipments get to their intended destinations on time and with good value for our clients. It has therefore assured its clients that professionalism would be attached to all their shipping transactions, clearance and delivery services they require. This year, we are going to consolidate what we have done. We are going to be shipping a lot more. We are going to clear and deliver a lot more for our clients. We have a lot of work in the pipeline and we are looking to serve our clients better in this, this, this 2016. The managing director of UT Logistics, Peter Osei, says his outfit is committed to changing the landscape of logistics this year with the requisite speed. Our stakeholders and our partners should expect bigger uh, transformational items from UT Logistics. Um, we, we, we aim to change the landscape of logistics this year with better value, speed and good action from, 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 from us and the whole, the whole team. So we expect that our clients should ensure that they will see professional service, they will, uh, they will see uh, good, 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 good value and good returns from, from, from us for this year. Head of Marketing, Research and Corporate Affairs of Royal Bank, Dr. Kwame Banya, says the bank's turnaround time of clients would improve immensely in 2016. Uh, the promise and the commitment we make to them in 2016 is that we are going to improve on every facet of our operations to make sure that the turnaround time is quicker. Uh, they are treated in a more friendly manner by our staff. Uh, the professionalism level will go up because we spent the whole of 2015 doing customer service training for every one of our staff, including cleaners, drivers, everybody, and the managing director himself. Everybody took part in the customer service, and we're expecting it to reflect in the way we do business in 2016 so that our shareholders will also smile a bit. Uh, but the most focus will be on our customers. It's about how we treat the customers. He said the Royal Bank, which has been in existence for three years, won several awards last year due to its innovations. He said in 2016, both Master and Visa cards would all be deployed in addition to the bank's in-house money transfer system called the Money Vulture system to bring convenience to customers. For a lot of people, they still can't believe that the Royal Bank is only three years old. Uh, we were only three years on the 10th of December 2015 uh, and it also means that the fact that people recognize that we are really competing with the others means that we probably are doing something uh, beyond what people are expecting us to do within the short period. Our branch network has increased giving our customers a lot more access to their funds. In terms of innovation we've created our own money transfer system most people are relying on the mobile money system. The Royal Bank has its own in-house money transfer system, which we call the money voucher, which we are going to spend a lot more time in 2016 uh, rolling out to our customers uh, for their benefit. We're also providing the normal money transfer through MTN and Airtel. But in 2016, Visa and uh, MasterCard will all come on board. He added that the bank will consolidate its existing branches in 2016. By the end of 2016, we expect that the full bouquet of services that you can require of your bank anywhere, you'll get it. But the difference is the fact that in terms of customer service, there's no bank in Ghana that beats the Royal Bank. And that's why we were best banking customer service at the last uh, banking hours. And that's the key thing, isn't it? When you are in the service industry and you are the best bank, <laughs> it's about a customer. Well, undoubtedly, with our proud sponsors behind us, with that great vision they have uh, for this year 2016, and also hearing uh, from the cream de la cream of the port and maritime trade as well as the international trade in this country, it appears we have a lot for you 
uh, this 2016. And Ion Port, like I said, also going bigger, expanding uh, reach, being on three major platforms, Ghana Television, Metro Television, and TV3, we should be able to solve all your trade problems as far as doing business with the port is concerned. In this uh, particular year, we're going to be following a number of issues and we'll be taking you to some of the transit countries for you to see uh, what goes on there. Some goods like that that you see behind me, we'll track them all, all the way to their destinations and, and bring you the best as far as trading uh, within the side bridging is concerned. Iron Port returns pretty shortly after the break. Star Shirts, creating smiles since 1985. Let go. Let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Assurance, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. There's a place in my heart that makes me feel that you're the one. It's a place I want to be, because satisfaction guarantee. From strength to strength, you help me grow, because you're there for me. And teach me how to be independent, because you you. Real banking, real difference. UT Logistics have come to stay. Um, when when you, you approach a job like the way we approach it, each job is unique. Uh, each client is unique. We provide the best um, service in the, in, the, in, in the system. We have best um, staff. We are very fast, we are quick, and we save customers a lot of, um, a lot of money. Well, so as you heard from the leaders of uh, a lot of uh, financial institutions and trading public, I'm sure that you should uh, begin to feel optimistic that the future uh, for this year, 2016, as far as trading is concerned, looks bright. And Iron Port, we also have a future, folks. 2016, we are going bigger. We're going to be on an additional network. Already we're on Ghana Television, Channel 278, on the DSTV channel, also Metro Television, channel 277 on the DSTV channel. This year, beginning uh, next week, we are going to be on TV3. It's on channel 279 on DSTV. So we also uh, have a New Year resolution and we're going to spread wide for you to be able to capture us wherever you are. Ion Port will be live on there Mondays at 5.30 uh, p.m only on TV3 and also Sundays on Metro Television and Mondays again on Ghana Television. We're going to go uh, to Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, the transit countries and even beyond to bring trade activities regarding the maritime and port industry closer to you for you to know, see, the port is supposed to serve you. That is why whenever you have a challenge, we encourage you to get in touch with us and we will try to solve them. We are going to talk about one of those challenges very soon. In the meantime, news and activities happening in the ports and maritime industry next. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is proposing changes to the current manifest structure in order to provide more information on imported cargo and also ensure smooth running of a terminal operating system, which the authority is presently implementing. 
Following series of meetings between GPHA, GCNet and SCL, which is the consultant for the integration, it emerged that the current manifest structure with multiple cargo was in a bad condition and could not be used for any terminal operating system. Users of the current manifest are unable to link cargo types with goods description and from which container they came in, which makes it difficult for billing by the port authority. The current manifest, once it is multi-cargo, it becomes an issue. The structure is not that harmonized that you could use for any, any system. What it means is that you have to do a manual, a bit of a manual work and also electronic work. And we are talking about the speed with which we can, I mean, transact our business in the port. At a meeting with the IT staff of all stakeholder agencies operating in the ports to discuss the proposed format of the cargo manifest, the IT manager of GPH, David Boyston, was optimistic that the move will yield the desired result. Frank Abrampa, the representative of the Shipping Owners and Agents Association of Ghana, welcomed the new initiative saying it will improve documentations and subsequently facilitate trade. For the shipping lines, it's a good idea. I mean, we need to improve our way of documentation. If there's a limitation in the description of the cargo that normally arrives, and Gapoha is asking for us to improve on the particulars and the information of the cargo that arrives, it's all well and good. The Port Authority is expected to implement a number of electronic and automated processes this year to ease doing business in Ghana's ports. In the wake of some microfinance companies swindling Ghanaians, which is causing anxiety and stress among millions of people in the country who have deposited money with them, Dr. Kwame Banyuako, Head of Marketing, Research and Corporate Affairs at Royal Bank, has cautioned Ghanaians to tread cautiously when doing business with the non-financial sector. People look at the difference between the, the interest that banks are prepared to give you, let's say on your fixed deposits, or, and then they are looking for something higher. So they go to microfinance company, which for them 40%, 50%, in some cases 100%. But then the question is, what work will that microfinance company use the money for, for which they will get returns higher than what they are promising you? So I think Ghanaians also need to be a bit more careful and you know, be true to themselves. It is not possible that somebody will take your money, promise you a 100% return, as a financial institution and be able to pay you back. He said Ghanaians should not be motivated by high expected returns on their deposits and risk their capital. So you take your monies to outside the banking sector, you are looking for high expected returns, you are putting on too much risk that you cannot bear. Dr. Kwame Banyuakun asserted that fixed deposits offered by the financial sector can guarantee customers of their investment rather than the astronomical returns promised by some microfinance companies which they are not able to fulfill. So if the banks are giving you 23, 24, 25%, you should be okay with that instead of looking for 40 and 50%, which is more likely to create problems for you and your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Shorts, creating smiles since 1985. Let go, let's celebrate 30 years of solid partnership. Star Assurance, your solid partner. I'll take care of you. Thank you with transparency, commitment to integrity. The Royal Bank. The Royal Bank. The Royal Bank. Real banking, real difference. We've all had stories about, about, about ports, about you know um, difficulties and challenges at the port. We think that to bring transparency to the port is very important for both the end consumers and even the people, some of the, the, the agents who work within the port. But this program is very, very critical and I think everybody who is involved in the port, in businesses that has impact on the port one way or the other should make it a point to, 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 to view it.
Well, folks, we have been encouraging you uh, to continue to send your challenges uh, you face as far as doing business uh, in and around the port is concerned. And we will endeavor to share them with the rest of the world and also try to get solutions for you. Prior to the end of the year 2015, we got a message from one Mr. and Mrs. Hammond all the way from US who said they imported a number of vehicles, uh, included Hyundai Sonata and also Audi Q7. The other vehicles, they were able to get them, Hyundai Sonata and Audi Q7, they couldn't meet uh, the deadline. 60 days passed and they couldn't clear the car. They were giving first letter of offer to come clear the car. And even that, on the last day uh, of expiration, that was 9th December, that is when they were able to raise the money. But Customs did not collect the money and said they could only offer him the Hyundai Sonata, but the Audi Q7, they cannot give it to him. It has been allocated. In fact, we have a new twist to this story. Take a listen. When Ion Port got to the Commissioner of Customs, he was just dispatching a reply letter to a petition filed by Mr. and Mrs. Hammond, who claimed customs had unduly allocated their Audi Q7 to an unknown individual at a cheaper cost. The Commissioner revealed to Ion Port that even the Commissioner General is keen about interrogating the case. But he was quick to add that a few things don't add up in the story being told by Mr. and Mrs. Hammond, hence requires further investigations. The Audi Q7. Uh, that's why I said there's somebody, if he's here, okay, we'll he, will, he, he will check to find out whether he made a declaration on, on it. The, on the, the Q7 yes, as well. Yes, as well. If he did a declaration on it, then it means there was a problem yeah. somewhere. Yeah. If he made a declaration, what happened? Yeah. Then we have to look at, we can trace everything okay. in the system. The commissioner, however, made available a letter which indicated that the Audi Q7 was allocated to one Loretta Asari in Tema on 11th December 2014, two days after the expiration of the first letter of offer which could allow the couple to clear the car. The contradiction here is, Mr. and Mrs. Hammond were giving up to the 9th December 2014 to clear the cars in the first letter of offer. And according to them, when they got to customs on the 9th December, they were told that the car had been allocated to a different owner on the same day of expiry of the first letter of offer. So perhaps the allocation letter which dates 11th December just two days after the deadline may give some credence to the claim by Mr. and Mrs. Hammond. A principal revenue officer of customs and a member of the vehicle allocation committee who oversees allocation of vehicles at the customs admitted to Ion Port that there are inconsistencies on the part of documentations issued by customs on the particular case of Mr. and Mrs. Hammond and the Arodi Q7 SUV. These are two documents coming out of customs. Yes. And in fact, a year or so ago, we had, we had almost cleaned up this. Yeah. It didn't used to okay. But now that it has occurred, we will have to sit down, like I said, and ensure that it's clean up. Yeah. And this thing will not happen. He says vehicles are often allocated to different owners, sometimes several months after they are not claimed by their respective owners, and not just a day or two. Yeah. Now we are doing the compilation of for October vehicles that arrived in the country in October 2015. So you see that it's not immediate. So all those that came in October 2015 uh, is being compiled now. He promised Iron Port that all such inappropriate documentations will be resolved in this year. Yeah, and uh, follow up and uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, when we get to uh, then another time when you are even around here, just come in and see. Do we still have these problems occurring? Yes. We'll tell you whether we have them or we'll be able to clear, clean up that area. But I'm assuring you, in a month or two, this will not be non existent. He advised Mr. and Mrs. Hammond to repetition the Commissioner General with all the necessary references for it to be reconsidered. Ion Port expresses our gratitude to Customs for showing great interest in this case and will continue to follow up to educate the trading public. Well, this year's uh, maiden edition of Ion Port, the year 2016 promises to be very great for this particular program. And if you do business in this country, whether you sell matches, you sell candles, you sell even sugar cane, please, once you do business, Ion Port is your number one choice. You have no choice. 
actually. Uh, we're going to bring you a lot more activities from the port. I have to say a big thank you to you for patronizing the program. Like I said, again, we're going to be on TV3, GTV, and Metro TV. Look out for these favorite stations of yours and continue to patronize the program. Thanks also to my crew, Robert Nyantechi, the freshly married man. He is always looking bright behind the camera. Also, Godwin Kabute, uh, Ebenezer Tevia, Isaac Bosu, also Prince Bruce Lamte, Joe Lavo, the executive producer, Paul Asariansa, and my man, Solomon Anderson. Thank you for watching, folks. <music>